Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to the call for tonight. If you can hear me, uh, please put the letter Y in the question box. <clears throat> and uh, if that's the case, then we'll go ahead and get started right away. And uh, what I want to talk about tonight is going to be pricing. And there's been a lot of discussion recently, if you follow social media, in terms of our particular category, uh, there, there's, uh, I, I think there's been some uh, discussion on what pricing should be, um, specifically when it comes to information products, um, probably more broadly, uh, 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 PLR, which is where I uh, reside. And so uh, I thought it was a good idea. Uh, for us to get into pricing uh, in particular and uh, and to make sure that we understand just some basic uh, some basic principles and that's really what I want to do and that that's always going to be the point to all of what we do um, here in the new marketer masterclass is to make sure um, that we understand uh, the privilege uh, the the principles um, beneath there so let's start talking about pricing and obviously um, pricing the discussion on pricing is more than your initial product cost for the customer right so if you just think that price is what you charge the customer pricing is a lot more than that you know when you're starting to think about how you're going to make decisions and what you're actually trying to communicate to your customer with your price and whether you're selling on the internet or selling person to person um, basically what you're doing is you're making an offer um, you're not just selling a product so your pricing should reflect your offer uh, uh, you're going to deliver a product you're going to deliver a service but you're going to wrap that product you're going to wrap that service around and you're going to wrap an offer around that service you're going to wrap an offer around that product what are going to be the parameters if they buy it right now what are going to be the parameters uh, if they buy it within the next two days what are going to be the parameters if they buy at this price in other words you're going to make an offer you're going to offer some bonuses you're going to offer some premiums you may offer some points you may offer an incentive for them to come back you're going to give them an entire offer you're not just selling a product and so your your product call your 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 price should reflect the offer and not necessarily uh, the, the, the product or the service itself. When you create an offer, you're considering the value of what the customer client is going to end up with. So you have to think about what's going to end up in their hands, whether it's digital or otherwise. What are they going to be getting? And you're considering the value, and you are pricing, obviously, to make a sale, but you're pricing with determination of what it is they're getting. And the perception should always be, regardless of what your pricing is, that the customer is getting something for them that exceeds what they're paying. They should always feel like they're getting away with something. They should always feel like when they make the purchase or they, make the, they, they, they give you what you're asking for, that they're getting something that they, that they feel like I got, I'm getting more than my dollar's worth. And at the same time, you know, the easiest thing is always going to be to just lower your price. Right? So if you want to give the customer more, that they perceive they're paying, then flat out, you know, the easiest way to do that is going to be to lower the price. That might not always be the best strategy to just lower price. And we're going to talk about why that is here in this in this session. And basically, one of the things you want to think about is price attracts certain customers. So whatever you're going to be doing, you know, unless the customer knows what something normally costs, when they meet your price or they meet your product, or they meet your service for the first time, if you just lower the price or whatever your low price is, it may not attract your ideal customer. We're going to get to what that ideal customer is in this session. At some point, what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that those who understand the value of the offer, those are going to be the people that, that really purchase. So in other words, if you offer a low price, it really should be to people that understand the value and so if you haven't done a great job of, of explaining the value if it's just that you're just the cheapest but people don't really understand the value of what they're getting you may be communicating the wrong thing and you want to make sure you're communicating the right thing because you want people to come back to you and buy more and in most cases you're going to want them to buy at a price at which is going to be commensurate with whatever you're offering in terms of the value and when you now obviously when you have premium pricing it's going to be human nature try to figure out why is that price so high? So in other words, everybody's priced at $10, but you're priced at $17 for the exact same thing. 
or basically the same thing. And so then, you know, what happens is people, by human nature, they get curious, well, why, why is this one $17 and why is everybody else at 10 and so people then have to go look deeper into what you're offering. They've got to look deeper at your pricing. They've got to look deeper at your features in order to figure out, well, why is you priced at a premium? And so premium pricing can communicate something to the customer without you having to do anything. Just by being the highest price, just by being at a premium price, people are going to want to know why you're at that premium price. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to price higher than everybody else. In other words, you just look at the marketplace, you just set yourself at a higher price than everybody else. That's not necessarily what you want to do. You want to think about the investigation process. right? That investigation process is always going to be to your benefit because it causes people to look deeper. And if you have a feature, uh, that 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 you can't that people cannot get every anywhere else when people go through that investigation process they're going to find that or whether it's in your copy or whatever it is you're doing they're going to find that out and you're you're probably going to have if you, if you don't get the sale at that point you're going to get a more informed customer about what it is you offer price is always going to attract certain customers um, it's going to be primarily the opposite when you've got cheap pricing you've got the lowest possible price. It's going to always be uh, uh, the opposite of that. So in other words, there are going to be times when people think that there's going to be something defective or unworthy in the product. right? So if you're the lowest price, in other words, everybody's at $10, you're at 7 and for the basically the same thing. And so what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to say, well, you know what? Um, you, you want people to see, again, the value of what it is that they're getting, but you don't want to communicate that there's something wrong with what you have. And that's typically what happens when you're cheaper than everybody else. People are going to automatically assume, well, this is probably probably not the best quality or there's something there that's going to be missing. And then what happens is, in reverse, what we just talked about, people start investigating. They start making comparisons. And you don't want to do that. And so what you want to do is you may always want to draw out, you, you want to make sure that that reluctance that people have when it comes to price, you don't want to attract any of that. Right? So you want to make sure your pricing reflects the value in some way. Um, it, it should always be to the, to the direction of the customer, while at the same time, you want to be communicating to the potential buyer you're giving them, giving them a premium solution. So that's the balance. Right? The, the, the value's always got to skew to the customer. In other words, you're getting a whole lot more than what they're paying, but at the same time, though, they need to feel like they're not getting the cheapest. They're getting a premium solution, even though they're paying what seems to be a cheap price. Um, now, in, in all of this, the key to making all this work is always going to be your upsell process. And, and whether or not you're still doing digital or whether or not you're doing uh, physical or you're doing something in person, your funnel process is going to make the difference in your pricing. And this is going to bear some explanation. That's what I want to go into. Let's talk about basic funnel theory. If you're going to set up a funnel, where people are going to get upsells. Let's talk about the basic funnel theory. In particular, this works very well online, and in most cases, it's also going to work when you're doing something offline or a physical product. Here's a basic funnel in terms of theory. The front end is going to get introductory pricing. They're going to get the basics. They're going to get what it is that you are offering to them. So in other words, whatever your offer is, that's going to be the basic level. Now, they may not know that you've got more in store for them, in other words, they bought based on you looking at your copy or looking at the offer and saying, hey, this is exactly what I want, but it's always going to be the low introductory pricing or the lowest possible pricing. And again, that's whether somebody knows you or not. That's whether somebody knows your product line. This is going to be on this particular funnel. For this product, it's the lowest introductory pricing. There's then going to be a back end or a second offer right after that first one at the point of sale. In other words, that point of sale offer, that first upsell is typically going to be your no-brainer offer. In other words, you don't need it to have success with whatever you bought basically. Right? So in other words, they bought the basic, they bought the basic level or they bought the basic product, that product stands alone. So it gives them success in the thing you promised them. Now, what you're doing here in the first upsell is you're giving them a no-brainer offer that's going to add to their success. So, but, but it should not be that they can't get success without having this. In other words, the, the, whatever deal you made with them the first hand, they ought to be able to take that and go run with it in order to get the success in whatever it is. We're not just talking about make money in line. We're not just talking about you know, performance-oriented things. Whatever it is that you promise them in terms of result, they ought to be able to get that with the introductory pricing. 
In other words, that, that, that first upsell should be more the same yet better, right? A pro version or a, a commercial version. In other words, they're going to get increased opportunity. Same instruction, same tool, but they're going to get something more if they get this level, whatever that is. So you're, going to, you're going to find a way to add on something right, that they may want you know, in order to get some more results. So, so they get the basic results with the front end. They get the, raise, the, the basic results with the first offer. But if they want more opportunity, you want to expand their opportunity with the same thing, that's what you're going to do in that front end offer. Now, there's going to be typically a second offer. And, and again, this works particularly well when we're talking about digital products. In some way, what you want to do is you want to think about that front end and maybe even the back end. You want to start thinking about, well, how can I do some of the process for them? How can I help them to get results faster? So in other words, you're going to give them some kind of templated system that fits on top of your front end. So in other words, let's say that what you're doing is you're doing graphics, right? You're, you're doing graphics instruction. So you're going to give them that, gra give them some, some starter graphics in your second, your second upsell. DYI, DFY is the way I think about it. In other words, you're going to do something for them as part of the process. You're going to find a way to get people to their goal faster by giving them some stuff. Now, again, some people are going to take you up on that and some people are not. But basically, people who want the results faster, they're going to see the value in that. In other words, very closely tied to the front end. And all these things should be congruent to your front end or your basic offer. This third upsell is going to be how do you maintain all these results? Right? And, and you're going to basically say, you know what, you need to continue with me monthly in some way. Some kind of continuity helps them to continue what it is they're getting. So in other words, you're getting results from the front end. Um, they, they expand those results with the back end. They expand, uh, they, they get those results faster with the, with the second upsell. And the third upsell, you say, you know what, you want to keep those results. You want to keep getting them. Then you want to have, you want to come to our continuity in some way. Right? So you're going to offer them something monthly on a, daily, on a monthly basis. Now, you can deviate from this, obviously, uh, but this is going to be your basic guide. This is basic funnel theory, and this is going to help us when we start talking about price. So what's the effective price to your customer? We talked about that basic pricing. When you have a funnel, what is the effective price? And we have to think about this when we start talking about pricing. Without this, to, to say I'm going to raise my price is probably incomplete. You want to think about this in terms of your pricing. Assume your front end price to your funnel, right? Your basic level is going to be $10, right? So the, what, if the individual purchases that, they pay $10. That's the effective price, right? They purchase the front end. The effective price then to them is $10. So now, let's then assume that the next part of your funnel is going to be $100. This is going to be second upsell, the first upsell. Assume that, that that part of the funnel is $100. Now, again, that may not be realistic, but let's just assume it is. Um, and let's say that of the people that purchased the front end offer, the basic offer, 20% of those people purchase a second level, right? So what does that mean our pricing is? What does that mean our effective price is? Our effective pricing is then going to be $30. It could be 20% times 100 plus the 10. It's going to be $30. That means that our pricing, based on the number of individuals that take us up on that second offer, that pricing is effectively $30. It's not $10. Well, all we did uh, with the $10 price is get a lot of people in the front door, and then 20% of those people decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy more. I'm going to take you up on that second offer. So effectively, it's like you actually pay, you actually priced yourself at $30 if your funnel is done right. Now, we can get into get doing a funnel right. That's not the point of this. The point of this is pricing, so you understand pricing. Let's assume then that the next part of your funnel, now obviously it may not be, but let's assume it's going to be $1,000, right? So then um, let's say that 5% of those people are going to be people that purchase the third upsell, right? So what does that, what does that mean then? Um, that means then your price is going to be $80, right? Because 5% of the people um, is, is going, we, we, we add on $50 um, to the pricing and it's going to be $80. So that basically means that if you get people all the way through that funnel and 5% of the people take you up on that third upsell, after the second upsell, the effective, it would have been as if you priced that product as $80. That's your effective price, right? So think about pricing in terms of your funnel and make sure your funnel is done so it's congruent and make sure your funnel is done so that people want that, 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 uh, that, that third offer. Now, here's what's important. What's all this mean? It really means you should have your funnel strategy in alignment. 
so that you can predict what people are going to purchase. Right, so you got to make you got to do a good job of making sure you put your funnel together. It also means you should, you should be thinking in terms of your overall funnel. Obviously, each upsell is going to stand on its own, right? Now, none of them should require another level to make the most of it. We just said that. So in other words, all these things should stand on their own. They shouldn't lead to previous level. Now, obviously, if you get the upsell, that should, you know, you, you, you have to have the basic offer. That should happen. But um, your basic offer should not depend on any of the subsequent offers, right? Now, what's important is that the customer understands the value being offered at each level of the funnel. So when they get there, they should understand that the, the value ought to be clear. Now, part of that's going to be your copywriting, but really that's going to be accomplished by making sure that you've got congruence, make sure you've got everything in alignment, and making sure it's all relevant. And so it means that uh, you should have an idea of who your, your ideal customer is and what you're really going to want to sell. Why do I mean that? Your, your signature offer really should be that last product in the funnel. Right? That should be sold at your premium pricing. And that's what really I was trying to communicate by the $1,000. In other words, what we're trying to do with the $10 product, we're trying to get people all the way through the funnels. We can figure out who our ideal customer is, and we're trying to attract them with that front-end product. So when you get down to the end, that person that, that trusts you enough, whether it's after years, whether it's after months, whether it's, whether it's after they just met you, they trust you enough to make, your, make the purchase at the highest possible level, at your premium pricing, at your signature pricing. That's your ideal customer. And you've just separated them out by using a pricing strategy inside of your funnel. Now, what, what more does that mean? That means then that your low price isn't really a low price, is it? Right? Remember, our effective price is $80 if we can get some people to take us up on that last offer. Um, it's a way of attempting, it's also attempting a way of attempting to find our ideal customers. What are we trying to do? We're trying to find people who will eventually buy that back-end offer. And low try now. Now, now, we know that low pricing is always going to attract the wise number of buyers, typically. Um, but, but it's the separation point between the people that are going to be your prospects and those who have the potential to be long-term customers. That's what we're trying to do with our pricing. That's what we're trying to do with the funnel. Uh, we can have the same effect in some cases right, by not doing a low price. Because, um, again, what we're thinking about is the funnel. So in some cases, you, you can give a product a way to get people into the funnel. As, as long as you can get them in there, and they're going to see those other offers, they're going to see the value of those subsequent offers, you can achieve the same effect by not offering the low pricing. And if your low pricing discourages the people you actually want to work with, you might want to do a giveaway instead of low price. Right now, sometimes free communicates the wrong thing too. But you, so you've got you've to be able to test, you've got to be able to understand, but sometimes... What you're doing with that free level is you're inviting freebie seekers. You don't want to do that. And so that's what, that's what, doing, that's what, giving, that's what uh, offering that lowest price is going to do. It's going to eliminate the freebie seekers. So now uh, you, you're going to have to test this out. So there's no automatic with this. You're going to have to determine which, which, which actually leads to more profit. Does the free offer lead to more profit? Does low pricing, uh, does the lowest pricing, you know, play around with the pricing on that front end until you start getting the ideal person to make it all the way through your funnel? Now, what's a key aspect of this? Let's talk about this. You should be thinking, in most cases, about some kind of continuity program. And that's really what takes your pricing and turns it into something that's a little more dynamic and that you have control over. I mean, it means that, individual, that, that, that individual is going to be paying you on a monthly basis. That's what continuity means. Um, so your effective price is going to vary, isn't it? If you think about this, let's say that at the end of your fund, you're going to have a $10 monthly membership. What happens is, and 1% of those people take you up on it, what happens then? That means, and, and let's say then that the average stick rate it's going to be about three months, right? That's, that tends to be the average stick rate. Let's say it's going to be about three months, and your average price is going to go up on an annual basis by 30 cents, right? That's what your, that's what your annual price is going to be. If you can get 1% of those people, take you up on that. Um, it, 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 but this is still going to be an important component of your business. If you think about it, what ha what's going to happen is, is that when the month starts, you're going to have the expectation of X number of dollars based on how many products you sold, based on how many people you can get to that continuity if that's going to be your third upsell. Right now, um, when, you, when you're doing that, you can start to focus your pricing from the business perspective. What do I mean by that? 
you can get people if you can get people right if you can get people into your funnel take you up on the membership your goal is going to be to increase the number of people that take you up on that continuity and then you know then right you're certain then that every percent that you can convert right every additional percentage you're going to raise your pricing by 30 cents your effective pricing and you're going to you're going to be raising the amount that you're going to be generating on a monthly basis and you and and here's what's what's important to, about all this um, it continues Right? And you're going to do that in a way that's going to be invisible to the customer. Right? And, and, and so the, the pr customer doesn't see the price increase. What they see is the value they got in the front end. But what you're doing is you're increasing the amount they're going to be paying you on a yearly basis. Now, um, the same is going to be true to other aspects of your funnel. Um, you, should, you, should be able to, you should be able to determine how you're converting at each level of the funnel, funnel if you're going to want to have a handle on your pricing. And then you can determine what you can do to generate the most income without changing the price of your front end offer. So in other words, you're going to leave that front end pricing at ten dollars, but you don't have to change the front end. Now, obviously, if you change it, um, you're, you're going to attract someone different, or you may attract more people if you lower it or raise it. But you don't have to do that if you understand your funnel. And so you're going to start with the percentages you're going to change most easily. So in other words. Um, you're going to change. You're going to consider those funnels, or you're going to consider trying to increase the conversions of those things where you can have the most impact. And so, if you can have the most impact by making sure you convert more people into your convert into your continuity program, do that. What you also need to consider is whether people are seeing all the offers in your funnel. Now, this is going to be a little more tactical, but you do want to make sure that people are going to see everything. You've got to make sure that people are getting to those pages so they can make a proper decision. And so you're going to be monitoring and testing this on a regular basis, um, so you're going to make sure that people are seeing all of the offers, okay? All right, so are there any questions? Any, any questions about pricing? Any questions? Now, obviously, this, is, this has been a, kind of a hot-button topic recently, and I wanted to make sure that I covered this uh, by giving you the theory. Uh, behind your pricing and this works especially well with digital products but it can also work with physical products also as well as uh, even even in some degree if you think about it you can work with consulting services right or any kind of services that you offer right so any any questions any any questions okay everybody well I hope that this has been helpful for you um, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.